Hello, welcome back to another of my new video. In today's video, we'll be showing you something called a really simple phase lock loop FM transmitter. So this is the exact circuit used in the last video, except with a little bit of modification. First, you can see the difference is that we've introduced two very cup arranged in reverse configurations, and then with the filtering resistor and the capacitor act as like a low pass filter. But the main things happen here. And here is exactly the same amplifier. But now we only tap with the resistor, only tap a little bit of the RF power out to our phase lock loop circuitries, which you need some RF to in order to measure it, the whether it's in phase or not. So here we go, you can see the entire circuits. Exactly the same before. Here, except there's two more very cap capacitor if you can see it's very cap diode actually and here's the filtering capacitor and the resistor from the outside of the rf sections out we've got a resistor come straight directly from the collector pin of the transistor to tap out the energy exactly the same as well with our connected a bulb this time actually this doesn't even need it but the bulb will now act as a dummy load in order to provide some true load to our circuits here same again as the matching section in order to test the circuit out so before we go any detail we explain how does it work for the phase lock loop circuitry the main magic happens here with the two very cup diode the very very cup diode actually now can make the entire circuit as a voltage controlled oscillator so the magic happens here very cup so with the diode what's happening is if you power it up in a reverse configuration is that there was something called a depletion region so this depletion region will act as a insulating layer if you have an insulating layer and it also got an alternating voltage that one will act as a capacitor, which does follows this. So if you got a power like a voltage towards the diode, so what's happened is that when if you increase the voltage, the depletion region also increases. Which if you have the increase of depletion region, the capacitance decrease, as we can see here, following our capacitor equation, C equals epsilon naught, epsilon naught A R, the material like dielectric constant, which follows up probably towards the silicon junction. A stands for the area of the diode, which is really small, and divided by, by the D. D stands for the distance. The smaller the distance, the larger the capacitance, the larger the distance of separation, the smaller the capacitance will be, which tells us capacitance is in proportional to 1 over d. And that's what happens here, and also frequency increase. So, for example, to our original circuit, if our original from the oscillator, if the original frequency is just slightly too high, what will happen is that the phase lock loop comparator will compare to our signal here. It will realize that, that it's really high, so which we can show you the entire phase lock loop circuitry here. Made of a PIC microcontroller, which is here, which will give us the control signal to our phase lock loop chip. If you want the circuit diagram for this one, you can just simply go and search up the pira.cz or some that sort of website. It will show you the circuit layout with all the components, which I don't need to explain in greater detail. But what happened is that this is like a phase lock loop uh, chip, which first use a reference signal from this little quartz crystal. This quartz crystal oscillates at 4 MHz. The 4 MHz signal will be used for the chip to compare our main frequency. The main frequency will be divided in order for the crystal to be compared with. If I find out the frequency is not in phase, then it will start to change the voltage. The magic happens here. For example, if our frequency is just slightly too high, what would happen is that the voltage will actually decrease towards the VCO. What will happen is that the junction depletion region will also decrease, thus the capacitance will increase, frequency will decrease, as we follow up this equation here, which everything is reversed down on what I've said. So 
what will happen is that if our capacitance also decreased, uh, our capacitor in this case will be increased. If we're increasing the uh, the capacitance, the what will happen is F resonance equals one over two pi square roots of L C. So if capacitance increase, our resonance frequency will also decrease. Same shows true about the inductor. Actually, we cannot change the value of inductor here. We can only change the capacitance. To change the inductance, that would be really difficult to do. So it's much easier to change the capacitance with a varactor diode, which this diode you can see here got two line drawn, which act more like a capacitor in our circuits. So if it happens in reverse, for example, if our frequency is just slightly too low, what will happen is that the same triggering will happen. The circuit want to increase its frequency. The voltage of the phase, uh, voltage controlled oscillator will be powered up from the phase lock chip will increase actually in this case. This chip will provide a higher voltage out towards the varactor diode. The depletion region will now increase, capacitance decrease, and frequency increase again as following up this equation here. So if our capacitance decrease, the frequency will increase until what will happen now is that the circuit reach an equilibrium of a stable point, then our frequency is locked and it will not really shift much at all, it just depends on how stable of your quartz crystal will be. The more stable the quartz crystal, the more stable your final phase lock loop signal will be. So for no general applications, the crystal will provide plenty of stability. And actually, from different way of powering up the quartz crystal, the cross cr quartz crystal is based on mechanical vibration of piezoelectricity, which previously discovered by Pierre Curie, the husband of Mary Curie. That is not the main thing. Is that we can do is control actually the biasing capacitor towards the quartz crystal effect drawn here. You can actually control this capacitor towards our crystal by varying the actual frequency of it. So you can change it just slightly. The main thing why quartz is used a lot is that quartz has an extremely high Q factor. This means the frequency is really, really tight and it will not really shift at all. So that's what makes quartz crystal so useful in our modern day digital electronic. Now to demonstrate the circuits, I've got the FM radio. Power it up to 95 megahertz, and our phase lock table is also put up to 95 megahertz. Now we can power the signal up the entire circuitry. As you can see, I'm going to put it slightly closer to you. Immediately, you can hear it's locked. This crystal now locks everything up. If you touch it, it doesn't adjust much, but sometimes you can adjust a bit by just touching the crystal. Some circuit is more sensitive if, if you change the quartz crystal. But now, the entire circuit has been locked and been really stable. You can hear now, the FM tr tr transmitter is working and radio went completely silent. Means it's completely working in phase. Now, it's this FM transmitter uh, radio is actually a digital FM radio. So it also uses the varactor diode to change the frequency of our radio. So now if I disconnect, you can hear it immediately pop up. The magical part about the phase lock loop signal is shows can demonstrate here. You can hear now the radio went completely silent. But now, if I put my finger close, if on the previous circuitry, if we just touch it slightly, it will immediately you will hear the radio gun off. This is because if we touch the coil, we actually introduce the capacitance, which in this case, the increasing in capacitance actually lowers our frequency. So thus, what will happen is that this phase lock loop signal circuitry will kick in and make sure our frequency stays exactly right by adjusting the bias in voltage towards our voltage control oscillator. Same happens again. Now if I lift the circuit up from the table, you will also hear it pops. It pops, you can hear it's quickly adjusting itself. Adjust. It's adjust itself actually. So that is the magical point. With the 
For phase lock loop circuitry, we actually can tune the FM radio extremely simple without the really tedious work of adjusting it so t tediously by trimming the trimmer just so carefully. And if now, if you change any section previously, if you change any section towards our main power amplifier by tuning the impedance, change this section of the circuitry will also affect the main oscillator parts circuitry as well so in our previous circuits it's really really tedious for example if i just put it close and i'm going to turn the os oscillator off towards the main circuitry here if we change this capacitor you can see or this capacitor shown here the this section of the circuitry will also change so the frequencies shift around as well as when this transistor went hot and if any part of the circuit expands just slightly, the frequency will also detune. So now what makes so helpful of a, of a voltage controlled oscillator to a phase lock loop is that now the frequency will be completely stable. So if you change any part of the section, the biasing will be changed so slightly to in order to make sure that we stay exactly in our, in our frequency we want it to be. This voltage controlled oscillator with a face lock loop is used commercially in commercial broadcast. And I hope you like this video. If you like, please consider subscribe and I shall see you in another new video.